What's up guys, here I will cover the effects a choke has in any kind of combat scenario. What does the choke do? What exactly makes it go unconscious? In this case, we'll be talking more about the rear naked choke, the classic rear naked choke, the blood choke, which targets the, the carotid arteries of the neck. Now when applying the blood choke, you usually want to get your elbow and the front of the opponent's neck almost facing the same direction, you know? So you want your forearm and your bicep on both sides of the opponent's neck. With your other arm, you want to cover the hand and go behind the opponent's head and then push forward on their head. Usually people like to um, make a fist and put it on the back of the opponent's head or the upper neck and push forward into the choke. And also with the choke, you don't want to be too high on the opponent's neck. You want to be toward the middle or lower on their neck to really get around the carotid arteries more accurately. The choke and hole compresses the carotid arteries, the jugular vein, which halts the return of blood flow from the head to the heart. And the carotid arteries being compressed blocks blood flow from the heart to the brain. And when there's no blood flow getting to the brain, the brain starts to shut down and you lose consciousness. And this choke rarely or usually does not cause any damage or does not affect the airway of the neck. Now the arteries are blocked, the carotid arteries and the jugular vein are compressed. Now, what percentage of the carotid arteries has to be compressed to actually lose consciousness? This varies between different people. There's many different studies and many different experiments showing the different percentages of compression on the carotid arteries for the opponent to actually start to tap out or actually lose consciousness. And roughly, the percentage of compression for someone to actually start to feel to go unconscious or actually do is around 80%, it seems like. When 80% of the carotid arteries are compressed, the person starts to tap or they start to lose consciousness. That's what it's shown. Sometimes it's 70%, sometimes it's 84 and sometimes it's even higher than that. You need more pressure. There was this one study, I believe Bloody Elbow actually covered it, that came out of the departments of cardiac sciences, medicine, and physiology, and pharmacology at the University of Calgary in Alberta, Canada. That was a mouthful to say, but uh, well, they did a study on 24 healthy police officers. And for some reason, four out of the 24 actually were able to last a lot longer than all the other people. And they actually stayed in the choke for over 23 seconds. Now, I don't know how they applied the choke on these four because it does say that 70% of the right arterial blood supply to the brain was stopped and 40% of the left was stopped. But the other ones, it was 80% on both. And that is probably why they were able to last a lot longer. Maybe the choke wasn't applied as effectively as the other 20 people. Or maybe it might have been just their anatomy. Just their body being a bit different than the others. And they found the mean time of being choked out was around 9.5 seconds. While four people tapped out. And the mean time was 11 seconds of people that actually tapped. And mind you, 80% of both the arteries were compressed. And there's many other studies. There's another study where 16 of 24 people lost consciousness around 7 to 10 seconds. And they had around 80% compression on the carotid arteries. Now, all in all, it depends who's putting on the choke. If you have Fader Amelian ankle putting on a choke on you like this, you might go out a little bit faster. Because you might be able to compress more of the arteries. You might be able to compress 90% or something a little bit higher than the average choke or average grappler. So it really depends on who's also putting on the choke. Guys like Fader, guys like Fabrizio Verdum, guys who are experienced grapplers and very powerful naturally on squeezing and really getting the right technique can probably put you out a little bit faster than that. And also, there's really no injuries that come from this. When the opponent passes out or they tap out or the choke is let go at that moment. When it comes to a healthy person, that is. Now, people ask, could you actually cause damage to the spine? It is possible. But when you're putting on a technical, precise, rear naked blood choke on the person, it usually will not do any damage to the spine. Unless you turn it into a neck crank, which is not going to be a rear naked choke anymore. But if it's a rear naked choke and nothing else, it almost will never cause real damage to the spine. Because again, the objective of the rear naked choke, of the blood choke, is to compress the carotid arteries, not to cause pain or to crank the neck or something. That's not a rear naked choke. Now people ask, how long does it take for someone to survive a rear naked choke? Uh, how long does the brain stay function or able to survive lack of blood flow. This usually uh, varies between two to five minutes, anywhere from there. 
but for people who have depleted their blood oxygen levels due to drug use or other things like that, this can actually be a lot shorter. The brain will probably not survive that long. That range will probably be a lot lower. But all in all, this all depends on the body. There's a lot of different body types out there. Um, so this choke will affect different people in different ways. The age of the person, the size of the person can matter because they did find that people with bigger necks tend to get choked out a lot easier. Um, although this is not study as much they have to do more studies on that but that is one thing that studies are finding because there is more tissue in the neck of people with larger necks so that is pretty much the rear naked choke the blood choke and the effects it has on the body so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy my content make sure to subscribe a lot of people have been asking me about this um to make another research kind of video. These are pretty fun, you know, you learn a lot of things from this. And for my next video, I'm probably gonna break down another fight and it might be Cub Swanson versus Duel Choice fight. I think that's about ready to get started. I mean, a lot of people have been asking me for that fight for a long time, so I'll probably get that one next. And I did check my Twitter poll. I did put a poll on Twitter on who you guys wanna see Conor McGregor fight next. And I'm a little bit surprised, but not really. It's almost a wash that Tony Ferguson should get the next title shot. And there are like 8%, 7% of people that said Pauli Malignaggi in MMA. You guys are just trolling. But seriously, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.